We completed the facility in 2016. And as you walked through, it was very much office space and just what you saw offices. And we designed it with a, a sense of openness because it's a science mission. So we wanted everybody to feel like they had part of it. And um, there was no secrets, you know, still no secrets. So it's basically a horseshoe on the other side is uh, more office space for workstations, and then we have you know the conference room here in the middle. We meet in the conference room if there's something going on and we need to talk it over. We just stand down, take the headsets off, and you know we go inside the conference room. Cur uh, when we started commissioning and launch, we were running about close to 150 people in the glass per shift, uh, and that's two shifts. So you know it's close to 300 people per 24 hours that it takes to kind of get the vehicle in. In operations and, and get it going to where we need to. That has now changed to where you see there's not a whole lot of people in today. Uh, we're down to about 40 to 50 people per shift. Uh, we're still 24-7 and we'll stay 24-7. The fl flight control room will be 24-7 forever. Uh, the back room that houses our instrument teams and our engineering staff, they'll be here during the day like most normal NASA missions. There's no one in right now because our contact is in about 20 minutes. So right now we're not in contact with JST, but while we're gonna do this tour, you will see the flight control room change their posture because we will go into contact with JWST. Currently, right now, the vehicle is running Cycle 1 Science, so we, even though we're not done with all the commissioning activities right now, um, it's not back to back to back. So we've moved up some of the Cycle 1 Science. We've been doing it for a few weeks now. Um, so that'll just kind of fill out as we go. The other, see, a couple of things I wanted to just point out to you. So when you go inside the flight control room and even in the mock area, other areas of the mock, it's very quiet because the, the furniture, carpet, and everything has been designed with sound absorption materials. Try to keep it really quiet in there and calm because it's, uh, like I was saying, there's a lot of people that it takes to, to run the mission. Currently, you know, we were running, uh, almost 700 people were on the mission team to, to operate JWST. Now we're, we're down to just a couple hundred. Um, so you don't want it to get too loud. So it's kind of like a library on purpose. Um, special lighting that we have in the ceilings, you can adjust it certain ways to make sure you don't get headaches because you're here for so long. People are running 12 hour shifts still. So that kind of, um, you know, we took that into account as well when we designed it. Um, the way that we do business here is very, uh, it's very repetitive. So typically what happens is the, somebody in the back room and the engineering staff will call into the flight control room that they want to do something. So That'll come into the mission operation manager console where I sit here, and they'll say, for example, we want to run activity X. And uh, so then I'll say, you know, you want to run activity X? I'll say, yes, we're going to run activity X, and then I'll, I'll copy that. And so basically then it, the, the activity gets handed off from them to me. Then I contact the operations controller in the front middle there, and I say, hey, they want to run activity X. Activity X? Yep, yeah, activity X. So we go back and forth a couple of times and make sure what we just said, and then he gets it, so I hand off to him. And then that person talks to the person on the front right, the command controller, does the same thing all over again, but then at the end of that one, tells the person that he has a go to actually send a command. That's the only person that's allowed to send commands to JWST is the command controller. There's only one person that does it, and, that's, and today it happens to be Justin. Uh, we have four teams that sit on the front row, we call it, and uh, today it happens to be Justin. So there's only really four people at a time for JWST that can send commands to the ground engineer on the front left, that person is responsible to maintain all of the networks and the data that comes into the facility. So when science data starts coming down, that person's making sure that it actually gets to the ground, that the data looks correct, and that it's functioning correctly. Um, that also is the person that talks to each of the Deep Space Network sites that are around the world. So we have Canberra, Australia, Goldstone, California, and Madrid, Spain. And you'll hear, as because it's going to happen while we go in there, that person will be communicating with the site at Canberra, that's our next contact, uh, to make sure that we uh, sync up there. In the middle, we have the timeline coordinator. Uh, those two people are basically the mission planners, so every time we're doing something, they give us a plan to start with. As we execute, sometimes we fall behind, then they have to replan it, or somebody may ask for an additional activity, and they're the ones that are actually programming it and kind of reissuing a new plan so that we can follow that plan and stay on the same.